What's up guys, TFC here, welcome back to my tutorial series. Um, right, so this is part two, and in this part we're going to be getting some real world height map data from a website called Tangram Height Mapper. Uh, we're going to be figuring out the right scale for that terrain, we're going to be putting that scale into our uh, track config files, and we're going to be loading that into L3DT with a texture so we can have a proper look at it. And hopefully by the end of the video as well, we'll be getting it into game so we can at least check it out. Um, so that's the plan. Alright, so the track I'm going to be doing for this tutorial series is going to be Majura. Um, great Italian track. Uh, MX and Nations track about three years ago, I believe. Um, but haven't seen it in the MXGP for a few years. Uh, back this year, I think, for 2020. Which is good news because it's an awesome track. Uh, it's got some great elevation changes. Uh, it's got some big old tables. It's going to be a good track for this tutorial. All right, so to start this off, we need the example track folder and the track tools. So I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop for this. We're going to bung the example track into that folder. OK, we're also going to get trackhead and the font. We're going to get terrain ed. And lastly, we're going to get map view. Uh, in fact, let's just chuck FBX to EDF in there too for later. Um, all right, so we now need to update everything the same as we did before. So we're going to rename the folder for the track files. Every instance of the name example in here, we're going to change to Majura. We're going to edit the ini file. With a, uh, a name that, as it will appear in the menu in game, and a short name. Okay, short name I'm going to use to match the track files for now. So we can save and close that. Uh, now we need to update the processes. So map.bat. Uh, we're going to edit that and we're going to update the file path. So example becomes the same Majura and the name of the map file. So save that. We're going to edit trh.bat as well. Save that. Um, same as last time, we're going to edit centerline.bat. Track path and track file. Save that. Alright, so that's our folder pretty much set up and ready to go. All right, so we're going to head over to uh, the Tangram Height Mapper website. You'll find a link for that in the description. Um, now, the way this works is pretty much the same as Google Maps. Uh, you navigate the same, zoom in, pan around, all that kind of stuff. You do have some controls on the right here, and we'll have a look at those shortly. Um, the next thing you're going to need is to load Google Earth. And the reason why we're going to use Google Earth, uh, well, two reasons actually. The first one is uh, you can use historical imagery, so we can go back in time and have a look at satellite data from a few years ago. And the second is you can export really high resolution images, which you can't from the website. So let's find our location. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the track's not been used in a while, and this image, which was probably taken last this year or last year, um, is looking quite worn out. And that won't be any good for us when we want to make a track and use this as a template. So if you click this uh, clock from the top menu here, uh, you can actually scroll back to previous years. Uh, so that's 2017. That would have been after the MX and Nations. That's 2016, that's probably going to be what we want to use. That's not good at all. 2014 was before that where it had a 
uh, a slightly different layout in places. So we're going to pick the we're going to pick the third of October, 2016, and that will do us perfectly. All right. So you need to zoom out so you get as much of the track on screen as possible. Um, any areas you want to include in the height map, we also need to include. And then we want to make sure we're panned completely above. Turn off terrain and click N on the compass so we're perfectly north. All right, and that is going to be the starting point for where we're going to find our height map. Um, so the next thing you want to do is uh, click this button here to view in Google Maps. And what that's going to do is load us a new tab and it's going to load exactly the same location and the reason for that is the URL gives us the latitude and the longitude which is going to be really helpful to find in Tangram because Tangram unfortunately doesn't make it very easy to find locations um, so we're going to copy the latitude which is the first number after the at okay we're going to head over to Tangram and as you see in the URL you have the latitude and the longitude right there so the lat we're going to put in the first part and we're going to paste our number we're going to go back to the uh, Google Maps to get the longitude copy that and we're going to paste that in as the second number um, now Tangram has its own zoom, le zoom level uh, whereas Google Maps use, uses meters above the image or something like that uh, unfortunately Tangram has this kind of hash number now I think 16 to 18 is probably a good area to start looking so I'm going to set it to 17 now to load this location you press enter and then you need to refresh the page and that has taken us to hopefully to Majura um, so the controls on the right here uh, you can turn map lines on which gives you uh, roads rivers, railways, all that kind of stuff, um, even some terrain features. And we're going to check out to see what we've got that's familiar. So this long straight road here and this road going up into a curve there is something we can see on here. So we can see this long straight road and we can see this kind of must be a path up there leading to this building, whatever that is. So we know we're looking in the right area. Um, so what we want to do is flick between the two and try and match these up as best as we can. Um, so that will probably take a minute and you'll probably have to adjust the zoom level a few times. So let's uh, let's see how well we can line this up. Okay, so I think I need to zoom in a little bit there. This is on 17.25 and it's quite sensitive, so we're going to try and change that to 17.35. Again, you want to refresh the page to get that, and you're going to have to enable map lines again. And let's see whether that's any better. Alright, so that's feeling pretty good. Um, so what we want to do now is take a print screen from Google Earth and we're going to paste as a new image. Alright, we're going to head over to Tangram. I'm going to turn off uh, map lines and we'll take a print screen of the height map back into GIMP we're going to paste that as a new layer so it's in exactly the same place um, then what I'm going to do is enable map lines turn off auto exposure and we're going to turn that exposure all the way down until we get pretty much nothing and we're going to print screen the map lines on their own head back to GIMP paste as a new layer I'm just going to get rid of that spot there because that will be right in the way. Alright, so what we can do with the map lines layer is we can go to filters generic dilate which will dilate the light 
pixels by one in every direction and then we can change the blend mode to screen and what that does is it's going to anything dark or black is going to be transparent so we can see the map lines laid over our image and right there we can see that these roads line up very nicely these roads are pretty much in the right place this road here is perfect this junction here is perfect um, so I'm pretty happy with that I think the image is 99.9% .9 in the correct place in the correct scale which is exactly what we want so we don't need our map lines layer anymore so we can delete that the two that we do need um, are the height map and the image so uh, the height map in MX bikes is a pretty specific format uh, it needs to be 16 bits per pixel IBM raw file um, so it also needs to be to the power of 2 plus 1 pixel so that's 2049 by 2049 uh, 2048 being a 2k to the power of uh, 2 image plus 1 pixel extra so you can also have things like 4097 by 4097 uh, you can also have rectangular like uh, 2049 by 4097 for example uh, we're going to work in 2K, so 2049 by 2049. So to get that, we need a perfect square. Um, so if we get the selection tool, and we want to tick this box here, which says fixed aspect ratio, what that's going to do is give us a perfect square no matter what we do. And we need to drag this completely over our track, making sure we get absolutely everything and any surrounding scenery we want to use as part of the height map. So looking at this, there's the corner there. So we need to be lower than that, and we need to kind of come out to compensate for it being a square. So probably somewhere around. I'll tell you what, let's start from the top. So probably somewhere from around here. Um, that is going to be ideal. All right, I'm just going to move it over slightly so we get more of a central track map. Okay, um, so let's start off by copying our texture layer so copy that paste that as a new image and then we're gonna select our height map layer copy that and paste that as a new image as well so now we have a uh, 690 by 690 image of each which is a perfect square alright so a couple of things we need to do now we need, first of all we need to get a higher res image of our texture that we can use because when we scale this up to 2048 for our texture use, because textures don't need the plus one pixel, um, we're going to lose a lot of quality. So scale image 2048 by 2048, we're going to lose a lot of image uh, image quality, and that's really blown out now. Um, our height map not so important because basically what we want from the height map is we want a general idea of slopes, peaks, um, flat areas. Uh, for which we're going to get the correct scale for shortly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and scale this now to 2049 by 2049 for use as the height map. And there's our height map file, that's great. So uh, let's do the height map first. So in order to get the right scale for this, because if we go to our track folder, the two files that we need to put this into are the HMF and the THT files. So if we edit these with Notepad, we'll be able to see what we're talking about at the top. Um, so we've got the physical size of the height map, 2049. We've got the name of the height map, heightmap.raw, which it will be. And then we've got size, X, Z, and scale. So X and Z are the horizontal size. This is the way the game is going to interpret that 2049 height map. And this is, this is in meters. Um, and the scale is 2.2. So what this is saying is it's 276 meters wide and deep by 2.2 meters tall, which is quite small. But as you can imagine, taking a 2049 image and stretching it down to 276 means that you're going to have a lot of detail squashed down into a small space. Um, if you were to take a 2049 height map and make it 4,000 meters wide, you'd lose a lot of detail. So there is a fine balance. Um, Generally speaking, anything up to about 800 
meters is going to be absolutely fine. Anything above that, you're probably going to want to start looking at a 4K height map. Okay, so going back to GIMP, um, the way we want to work out the high and the low areas of this image, although it's pretty obvious from here, um, we're going to duplicate the layer. And this top layer, we're going to go to Color Threshold. And what that will do is allow us to pick the blackest area, which is right there, and the whitest area of this image. So conveniently, they're placed on either side of the image. OK, so OK that. We're then going to copy our texture, our basic texture. And we're going to paste that underneath. So edit, paste as a new layer. And we're going to turn the opacity down slightly on the uh, threshold image so we can see uh, what areas, as in right here, what areas are we looking for in Google Earth. So now we know, we can go back to Google Earth. OK, to find this, um, we are going to turn the terrain back on. We can still roll back that imagery. And let's have a look to see what we've got. So. We're looking for this area right here. This is like a small field with some tracks in just off the straight road, which is this field right here. So if we hover our mouse over this area, in the bottom right there, you can see we're getting about 333 meters. Um, so let's make a note of that. Let's make a new file and we'll say 333 meters is our low point. And back to GIMP somewhere past this building and down from this building we're going to find the height that we're looking for so past this building somewhere around here uh, you've got 395 meters so let's make a note of that as well 395 meters so to do some quick maths probably all laughing at me for using a calculator but whatever uh, 395 take 333 gives us an overall scale of 62 meters. So our track is going to be 62 meters tall from lowest point to highest point. Um, now we need to find our horizontal scale which is the same in both directions because we're working with a perfect square. So going back to our image we don't need that anymore we leave our height map as is. Um, we are going to want to measure from this is a good one. So we've got this building right here all the way across to this shadow area right here. So we can get that pretty spot on um, if we return to yep that's going to be right there to just about here. So to do that we want to go tools ruler and we're just going to click from that point keep it nice and straight to that point and that gives us 457.1 meters so we're going to go by 457 meters so that's our track scale so we can now go into our HMF and THT and go 457 by 457 by 62 and we want to copy that entire block of uh, data and paste it into our THT so we've got the same in both so save both of those and we have our scale Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get a high quality image for our uh, texture that we're going to use for a guide because that will just be difficult to work with. Um, to do that, we're going to go to Google Earth. We're going to get rid of our ruler and we are going to click this button right here, Save Image. All right, so we go to Map Options. We can turn off Title and Description, uh, Legend, Scale, and compass. Turn all that off. All right. We're also going to disable the terrain because that's the way we took the image originally. And we're now going to pick resolution. 
which we can choose maximum and then we're going to save image um, now I'm going to save this image as high res layout um, just so we know what it is we'll let Google Earth do its thing alright so back into GIMP now we're going to open that high res image there we go and this file is pretty huge it's 4800 by 2800 pixels and we're going to copy our low quality image and we're going to paste it into our high quality image as a new layer okay so we're actually not far out there but we are going to need to make some adjustments um, so we're going to want to use the scale tool right there um, we're going to going to tick this box here that says keep aspect that's very important same as before it's going to maintain a perfect square and then we're going to scale our image accordingly so we can see we can see where this bottom corner should probably be lining up and it's going to be roughly around there and then we're going to go to our opposite corner and we're going to drag that until that also lines up with the uh, the high quality image underneath it so let's just go back and double check the other corner which still looks pretty good to me there we go and then that gives us an image of 2112 by 2112 so we're going to scale that um, now if we toggle the layer on and off you'll see our high quality version and our low quality version occupy the same place um, alright so on our low quality layer first of all we're going to um, change this option here layer layer to image size which gives us the whole canvas to work with and we're then going to use the magic wand tool to select the outskirts of that image so we select the outside of it um, we're going to go select invert we're going to go to our high quality layer and copy and we're going to edit paste as new image now this is our new high quality layer which is actually bigger than 204, 2048 so I'm going to go image scale image 2048 scale that and there it is that's as good as it's going to get as a guide to build this track on so I'm going to save this and to do that in GIMP you don't save that will save as an XCF you need to export as we're going to go to Majura and I'm going to save this as a TGA file so we can also use it in game and we're going to call it layout.tga export that then I'm going to go to our height map which is 2049 I'm going to do the same file export as and we're going to save this as a PNG file um, because that is a format that L3DT can load and we're going to call it heightmap.png export that alright so that's uh, the basics of gathering the right data we need getting the right size and getting a high quality image um, nice and straightforward didn't really take too long so the next step we're going to head over to L3DT alright so once we're open go to file import height field um, and in our folder we've got heightmap.png we're going to open that when it's selected we'll go next okay now this gives you uh, several options um, horizontal scale and vertical range so horizontal scale is basically uh, what scale L3DT is going to interpret your height map at and in this case it's set to 10 as standard we're going to change that to 1 now that's in meters so what that's going to do is for every pixel that's going to be 1 meter um, so if, if we were to import our height map at 2049 for one pixel per meter our height map would be displayed in L3DT at 2049 meters 
Now that's way too big. Um, it's fine if you want to figure out what vertical scale you want to use to match that, but the problem is because uh, our vertical scale is 62 when it's 457 meters wide, at 2049 that would be about five times that. Um, so that's no good. So a quick and simple way to work out exactly how to do this um, and get a 1-1 scale horizontally and vertically into L3DT is we're going to work out what percentage 457 is about 2049. And we can use that as our horizontal scale and that way our vertical scale will match. Um, so to do that, grab the calculator we're going to divide 457, so our in-game height map size, by the physical size of the height map, 2049, and then we're going to times it by 100, and that's going to give us 22.3. Um, so if we wanted to use that as a horizontal scale, we go 0 0.22 is close enough. And that way, we can use our 62 meter maximum altitude, 0 to 62, and that will give us a perfect 1-1 one, one horizontal and vertical height map to work on. Um, and it will be larger than, for example, if we were to make our uh, physical size 457, we'd lose a lot of detail. So doing it this way, you maintain the ability to use a lot of detail um, against using something that's absolutely massive and too big to work on. Um, Alright, so now we've got our height map in, we need to go File, Import, Texture Map, and we're going to import uh, layout.tga and now if we go to tools height field editor 3d there's our height map and view textured there it is textured now I'm a little bit disappointed with the data that we've got from Tangram because first of all it doesn't look 100% accurate which is pretty common to be fair um, after all it is really not intended for dealing with areas of land this small it's intended for dealing with large mountain ranges and plains and all kinds of stuff um, so it's no wonder that it's not 100% accurate now what we want is we want this area down here which is the flattest lowest area we want that compared to the tallest peak to be accurate and we want roughly the slopes to be roughly accurate as well so um, it looks to me like actually on the whole uh, the slopes the peak and the flat area down the bottom there are pretty spot on um, and they are especially according to Google Earth's height data so this is plenty to work with and it's going to take a bit of work to get it right but it's nothing we can't do okay so if you enable turbo we're going to up the clip which is the draw distance you can have a real look around and see what we've got there we go um, and if we go a little bit closer you'll notice that when you lower the clip a little bit so we've got some processing power to work with and up the tries uh, you'll start seeing this kind of staircase effect now this is really because we've copied it from a screenshot we've not downloaded some real high-res data and that can't be helped um, so one, what we're going to do quickly is set the smooth into about five end cycles um, use the mouse wheel to bring up the size of the smooth brush Okay, so we've uh, we've smoothed the track path out now. That'll probably do for everything we're going to do in L3DT for this video, uh, except for exporting. We're going to go to height field. We're going to go file export active map layer.
which is our height field we have selected. We're going to change the file format to RAW. Now everything about the way L3DT exports RAWs is already correct. So you don't need to change anything at all to get this to work with MX Bikes. Uh, file name, we're going to click the dots and in our Majora folder we're going to pick heightmap.raw. So it's going to save over the example height map. We don't need to resize because it's already set to 049. And we're going to press OK and that is it. It's now exported uh, into our uh, track folder, which is there. As you can see, that's just updated. Um, so, over to the HMF and the THT files. So we have what we need at the top here. We've got all the sizing correct, um, but everything underneath we we need to change. Um, so we don't have all of these layers and masks at the moment. We're going to do that later. Um, but for now we want one layer, layer zero, and we can get rid of absolutely everything else. So delete all of that. We're also going to go into the THT and do the same thing. So forget surface layers, we're going to go down to material layers. We're going to change that to one. We're going to get rid of surface layers entirely. So it starts with number of material layers. We're going to use layer zero. And same again, we're going to get rid of absolutely everything underneath that. Um, for this example, I'll we'll change that surface type to soil just because I prefer it. Um, right, so we don't need frame because frame is for um, weathered tracks, so rain and that kind of thing. And get rid of that. So this is what we have. Um, now the way this works is it takes a texture and it, you, you have the ability to tile that across your track. So if you have a height map that's in this case 457 meters wide, and you have a, a tile that looks like about three meters square of, of mud treads, you're going to want to tile that 50 or 100 times to make it look half decent. Um, in this case, we're not going to tile anything for now. We're just going to use our layout.tga. So copy layout.tga. We're going to move that into the maps folder. Paste that in there. Uh, we're going to change this to maps forward slash layout.tga and we're going to repeat it once because that tile takes up the entire track and we're going to save that. Uh, in the THT we don't need to change anything so this material layer 0 corresponds to layer 0 in the HMF um, and that controls what surface type layer 0 has so in this case we've got that set to soil. So as long as both of those are saved we're going to go over to our track folder and we're going to do exactly the same process as we did when we did the example track in the first video. So we'll go into our track folder, we'll delete the map and the TRH so we can see we've definitely made new files. Uh, we're going to run trh.bat, we're going to run centerline.bat to merge that onto the TRH file, and we're going to run map.bat. Right, so now those are finished, we're going to go into our track folder and we can see we now have a map and a TRH file. Now the center line we put onto this is the one from the example track. That doesn't matter for now, we'll cover the race data later. Um, we know for a fact that the example track was smaller, so this center line is going to fit on our track. So now we have that in there, we'll copy that entire folder. So we'll go over to our mods tracks folder and we'll paste it in. Alright, so let's uh, load the game up and check it out. Alright, so uh, testing. There's our track. And let's give it a go. Alright, so this is going to be very, very rough. Um, had no work done on it whatsoever. There's our track path. So while I'm testing this out, I think it's important to just remind you guys that making a replica track is not easy. Um, it's not something that you can do overnight. It's not something that takes half an hour. 
as you can see, this is the kind of data that I often get from uh, real world sources like Tangram. Um, and it's going to take a lot of work to turn this into what, what people would consider a good replica track. Um, you can see that we've got the right horizontal scale. The track's about as wide as it should be. Uh, the vertical scale on the whole is pretty much how it should be. But as you can see, these slopes, uh, the peaks, where the track goes is just not anywhere near the way it should be. This is the kind of work that I'm going to be putting into the next video, which is going to be on L3DT and how we turn this into um, way more of what it should look like. All right, so that'll do for testing. Okay, so I think this has been a pretty good one. We've made some pretty good steps towards getting our track on the go. Um, we've got real-world data from Tangram. We've got the right horizontal scale, the right vertical scale. Uh, we've got a high-res image. We've managed to get that in-game to the point where we've tested it, and we've had a, a quick look at L3DT as well, uh, both importing and exporting. So coming up next, we're going to be going into L3DT, and we're going to be uh, making some serious changes to... Uh, the finer details of that height map, we're going to get something way more uh, realistic in there. Uh, so we're going to be getting some reference pictures from Google Images. Uh, we're going to be using some GoPro footage as a reference video. And we're going to be looking at uh, some video from uh, races at Majora to use as uh, reference videos as well. So we know what we want to achieve. Uh, it's going to be a long road to get there. Um, but I'm not going to include all of that process in the tutorials. Uh, these are just really going to cover the basics. So using L3DT, I'll show you some tips and tricks and um, I'll record a bunch of footage that you guys can watch if you want to. Um, so thanks for watching guys. Uh, again, if you want to keep up to date with this series um, or any of my other stuff, then please subscribe to my channel. If you liked the video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up as it definitely helps. All right, catch you later.